in a previous video, I talked about how Constantine worshipped a few different um, false gods, pagan gods, and how those gods were depicted in the battle that he had with Maxentius. And he depicted that entire battle in the Constantine arch that is in Rome. It's at the very top of the arch. And one of the things that I mentioned to you is, you know, he came up with this whole story after the fact that Christ had appeared to him in a vision and said, by this sign, you will conquer, referring to the cross. The cross had not been something that people, an image that people had set up. There's the significance of the cross in the word, but that's not to be confused with the image of the cross that was later set up by Constantine. The cross that, by the way, was a pagan symbol. A pagan symbol to the god Tammuz, who is a sun god. Also is referred to a god of fertility. I also shared with you that when we look at Ezekiel, I think it's Ezekiel 9, and we're reading about the third temple, and now we know that the third temple is us. There's not going to be a third temple that's going to be built in physical Jerusalem. We are the third temple. No one in the New Testament was looking towards building the new temp the, the third temple. They knew and continued to explain that we are being fitted together as a temple. Now, in that third temple it, that is described in Ezekiel, the women are bowing down to, they are mourning the God, excuse me, mourning the God Tammuz, this God of fertility, and the men are bowing to the sun. This theme of the sun god is repetitive in pagan culture and satanic worship. I mean, I can't even count how many sun gods I've come across. Why do they need so many gods? We only need one. Kind of weird, isn't it? Now, what I want to talk with you about in this video is, and I'm not going to really go, go necessarily into the story of Saturnalia or Mithras. I talked a little bit about Mithras in that previous video. If you feel that you want to learn more about that, great. But I, I personally, I don't need to, you know, get a doctorate in all these false gods. They're nothing. The only thing that I need to know is what it is that Christians are observing so that I can do my job to call them back. So look, Christmas is a holiday, not a holy day, having nothing to do with Christ. It has never had anything to do with Christ. It was implemented by the Catholic Church in order to deceive historically lifted up to Mithras, who was said to be born on December 25th, and then gifts were give, gifts are, are given. It's also celebrated to Saturnalia and Sol Invictus, another sun god. Maybe one day they'll figure out that their gods don't do anything and they'll stop trying to collect sun gods. Here's why this should matter to you. Yesterday when we were reading through Matthew, we saw that the Pharisees were accusing Jesus of driving out spirits by Beelzebul. And Jesus responded. And one of the things that I told you, told you in the video is that this is often misrepresented, like as though Satan won't go against his own kingdom. So the way that Jesus responded was that he said, a kingdom divided against itself will not stand. And I think people have taken that to mean, therefore, Satan won't fight against Satan. Actually, he does fight against himself or fights against his own people, turns his own people against each other. And all Jesus was saying is a kingdom divided against itself is not going to stand. His is going to be an eternal kingdom. But Satan's kingdom isn't going to stand. He literally destroys his own people. Here's what I want you to know. There is a satanic temple that has installed a holiday display at the Illinois State Capitol building. If you look this up, you're going to see that there is a Christmas tree, there is a nativity scene, images that we were told not to set up, but for some reason, Christians set that up there. There is a menorah set up for Hanukkah, and now this satanic temple has installed a holiday display that includes like some representation of uh, Genesis with apples and a uh, 12-foot knitted serpent and some were saying that they did this like to come against the catholic church which to me is kind of funny because they both have the same spirit but again understand that satan's people he pits his people against each other his kingdom's not going to stand he destroys his own people and he sets them up against each other 
not a very good strategy if you want to win a war or if you want your kingdom to stand, right? I mean, Jesus talks about unity and bringing his people into unity, even to the extent that he describes us as a body, as a temple, where each one of us has an integral function in order for the temple to stand, in order for the body to function. In any event, they have set up this display in order to celebrate Sol Invictus, which takes place on the 25th of December. Interesting, right? The outright blatant satanic community observes December 25th to their false god, who is going to perdition. Counterfeit Christianity also celebrates that same holiday in deception. And no doubt, the people who don't want to know are not going to look into this because you can see it very clearly. Look in the word. Does the word say when Jesus' birthday was? But does the word not give us several holy days which we are to observe. And do you think that if God wanted us to observe Christ's birth that he wouldn't that he would have told us when he was born, that he would have commanded it as a holy day? But we celebrate this holiday, this pagan holiday to Satan and these false gods he hides behind. We engage in pagan practices, you guys, that are strictly forbidden. In the word, like setting up images and little statues, we erect a Christmas tree in our home and give presents. Not a single one of God's holy days tells us to do any of that. This should be of great concern, and it should really open your eyes and, you know, alarm bells should be going off. That all of these things that we've been taught to do as Christians are eerily familiar to satanic ritual. And the last thing I want to say about this is that this should open our eyes. It, even though this is not the abomination of desolation, the alarm bells should be going off for us right now. A Capitol building is a temple of sorts. And so to have this image, this physical image inside of a temple in which these things are being set up should wake us up and shake us up because you know that God establishes certain things in the natural in order to get our attention. He starts harming the earth in order to help us understand the destruction that is coming to us. He takes great care to speak to us in that way before he brings destruction. And you have to acknowledge all of the ways that he is trying to get our attention through his witnesses, through harming the earth, global warming through what's going on in our political systems, through COVID and the forcing, the mandatory vaccinations. Do I believe that those things are the mark of the beast? No, I don't believe those things are the mark of the beast. I believe that they are being established in the natural in order to warn us of what we are about to take in the spiritual. What is being set up in our spiritual temples are we setting up that Christmas tree in our hearts? Are we setting up those images and statues in our hearts? Are we bowing down to this sun god that was established by the harlot Catholic Church that continues to be worshipped by the prostitutes that bore out of her? Is this what's set up in our hearts? Because the imagery is palpable. And God is dropping these hints. He's dropping these hints for his people. Look alive. Wake up. What more can he do if we just don't want to listen, if we are so attached to these things? You know, it was hard for me to throw out my Christmas stuff for like a minute. It was hard to think about my grandchild coming and, okay, so how do we do this? But I mean, it, it hasn't been that hard because we're going to make our own memories. We're going to do new things. There's plenty that God has given us to enjoy and plenty more that is true joy where we're not sugaring ourselves up and alcoholing ourselves up and, you know, going out and having to buy a bunch of stuff. I'm actually enjoying not doing that. I give gifts to my kids all the time. I sew stuff for them and make stuff and cook stuff. I don't need a holiday to do that. You can do this if you are struggling with separating from the world, with circumcising from the world. You can do this, but you can only do it with him. You've got to pray for him to, to change your heart. And then you have to receive that. But please seriously consider what you're doing if you participate in these things. 
and not just what you're doing, but what is in your heart, what you're holding on to. Thank you for listening. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.